This is one of the most biodiverse places on the planet. For hundreds of years, Kew Gardens have been amassing millions of specimens of plants and fungi and conserving them to study. Now they're on a mission to modernise. We're trying to digitise all our herbarium specimens held in these buildings. The cupboards you see around you contain specimens from all over the globe. We've just imaged our millionth specimen. We've got six million more to do, but we're well on track. And we really want to get this information out. We want to essentially turn this building inside out so the information we hold can be used by people worldwide for whichever environmental issue they're interested in. Dr Sarah Phillips is one of more than 300 people getting this collection online. So what do you actually mean by digitising a plant? Oh, yeah, so... Um... What we mean by that is capturing the information that you would find on a herbarium specimen and then imaging it and producing a high resolution image. So then you can start looking at the details of the characters and from the image, you know, a taxonomist can use it for their research. So here we have a sample of herbarium specimens. Um, so they're really sort of plant dried plant material that have been mounted on herbarium sheets, usually kind of glued on. And also, as well as the plant itself, you have like label information, and that will be what, the, what species the plant is, where it's uh, from, who collected it and when it was collected. And so, yeah, here we've got a large selection. You know, we've got actually some that we've been collected from um, in Darwin's collected. So these are one from the Straits of Magellan, which is an orchid. So, you know, we have, I think it's around 1834. So we just have a, a, a huge variety. So that's of a plant that Darwin has touched. Yes, yeah, yeah, he would have, like, yeah, collected it and been on the beagle with it round the, round the world. And how does something go from this piece of paper to something that someone on the other side of the world can study for their conservation science? So let's have a look at the imaging station. So the idea behind this is that we take high-resolution images that then a botanist would be able to zoom in and have a look at the characters and be able to check the identification. This gorgeous species is part of the Allium family, which became the millionth specimen to be digitised here at Kew. But standing in this garden, surrounded by all the smells and the textures of all the different flowers, it's hard to imagine that any of this could be turned into something meaningful that you could study on the internet. But that's exactly what they're trying to do here. They're trying to take their over 8 million specimens that they've collected over the years and just turn them over to the scientific community. Alan and the team of digitizers are hopeful their work will improve the science around plants and climate change. It gives us an idea of which plants are going to be most threatened and may not survive. Quite often, the actual species being used might not survive where it's currently going, but what, is it, what are its closest relatives? Could they be used? Are there features in those relatives which could be brought into food plants, for example, which would enable them to survive in, under different climates? So it really provides a sort of evidence base for understanding current use of plants, but also the future use. From Darwin's hands to the internet, in just a few months, Q will open a portal, meaning the whole world has access to their extraordinary collection. Mickey Carroll, Q Gardens, Sky News.